Students, this is the circle problem video for the Unit 1 Motions and Shapes Study Guide. You need to have a pencil handy, possibly a calculator, colors also might be helpful, and a straight edge. So again, pencil, colors, calculator, straight edge. Taking a look at number one. Again, when you're solving, the first thing you want to do is always draw your distributive line. So we're going to distribute and be really careful when you distribute that you carry the negatives over if there is negative. So next line reads, negative 2x, negative 2 minus 5x equals negative 6x minus 12. Before you start canceling stuff across the equal sign, it's very important that you collect like terms. So I collect my x's. I'm going to single underline my x's, double underline my numbers. And I see if I have anything that matches, then I collect it. On the left, there's something to collect, but there's nothing on the right. After you've collected, go ahead and solve for x. Okay, radicals. This is still giving many of you guys grief. So once again, the steps I'm going to write here. One, you're going to clear the basement. Two, you're going to factor. Three, we're going to simplify by pulling out dates. Four, we're going to reduce. Clear, factor, simplify, reduce. Step one is to clear. So the basement here, the denominator is root 35. We multiply top and bottom by root 35. Next line reads, 4, square root. Now I'm going to factor, and this is going to be over 35, because any radical times itself just unlocks the radical. So I'm going to factor 25. 5 times 5, and I'm going to factor 35. 5 times 7. And I ask myself, now we have cleared, we have factored, now we simplify. We have a pair of dates here, we have a pair of 5, so they're going to come out. Next line reads, 5 times 4, square root. What's left, you just leave it under the radical sign, and then 35. That's step three. Last step is you reduce the possible. Five goes into 35 seven times. Our final answer is right there. Before you add and subtract radicals, it's very important that you factor and simplify. Factor and simplify first. So the first part here is we're going to factor, if at all possible. And this one is 2 and 12, 2 and 6, 2 and 3. This one's 2 and 3. This 2 and 56. And then 2 and 28, 2 and 14, 2 and 7. This last one is 2 and 16, 2 and 8, 2 and 4, 2 and 2. Now you want to look for your dates and you're going to pull out any doubles that you have on the outside. So I'm going to do just this first one. I have a pair of twos. So I bring a two out and it's going to be right here. I'm going to have two times negative three and then I see who stays and that's six. So I have root six plus Take a look here, there's no dates, so 
So there's nothing to come out, so it stays to root 6. This one, you look again for your dates. And we're going to pull two sets of twos out. And we're going to go 2 times 2 times 2 square root 7 minus, and then I want you to do this last one on your own, please. Do this last one on your own. Place the answer right there. Then you collect a like radicals and check your answer. So let's find the slope through each pair of points. Let's write out what we know about slope. Slope equals rise over run. In the equation, rise minus the y's over run minus the x's. I'm going to write a template here. That's our slope template. You want to write a slope template, please? And now we circle plug chuck. We have a y. I pick up the first y, negative 20. Pick up the next y, 17. Pick up the first x, negative 7. Pick up the next x, it's going to be negative 2. You need to finish that off, get the final answer, watch your double negatives. Please use a template as you work with slope. Sketch a graph of each line. Again, you always have a choice. You can use intercepts or you can use y equals mx plus b. First, I'm going to show you intercepts. That's 0 blank and blank 0. I'm going to write my equation nice and big so it's easy to work with. Negative 3x plus 48 equals negative 12y. So at first, I'm going to put a 0 in the x. In that case, this whole thing goes bye-bye. So if you need to, put your thumb over it. And then I work out my y-coordinate. So I'm going to divide by negative 12 divide by negative 12 and 12 goes into 48 four times and it's negative so my answer here is going to be negative 4. Okay, now we're going to do the other one. So for the other one we have a 0 in the y coordinate. So when we say goodbye to y, be really careful with this. You can't just scratch it out. Technically, that becomes 0. So this one I'm going to have to work out because I have negative 3x plus 48 equals 0. First, I have to bring the 48 over. Then we're going to divide by 3, negative 3. And I'm going to go 48 here. I know that's going to become positive, so I'm just going to do this long hand right here. 3 goes into 4 one time. 3 left over, or with 1 left over, 18. 3 goes into 18 16 times. So that's 16. Now, obviously, that second point is going to be off the grid. 
you can use that. You can bunny hop it. You can make it larger or estimate. But if it is off the grid, it might be helpful to go ahead and change it to y equals mx plus b and see what happens. So we're going to come down here, negative 3x plus 48 equals negative 12. Y. Our goal is to get Y by itself. So I'm going to just divide everything by negative 12. I end up with Y equals 12 goes into 48. Again, four times. It's going to be negative, so negative 4. And then here, the negatives cancel, and that's 1 fourth. 3 goes into 12 four times. X. Now I'm going to swing this around so you're familiar with it. Y equals 1 fourth X minus 4. Now that looks much more manageable. So this is a case in which the Y intercept form is actually easier to graph than intercepts. Usually intercepts are easier to handle. So we start at the negative 4. And our rise is 1. And our run is 4, and it's positive, so we're going to go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you graph your line. Now I'm going to drag this line way out here because I want you to kind of see that if we did extend this intercept way out here, that you can see why the x-intercept, which is the 16, 0, why it's going to be way out here at 16, comma, 0, because it's a very shallow sloping line. It says write the slope-intercept form of the equation for the line desired. So we have a desired line, or described, we have a described line, and we have a given line. So right here, here's our given line. And then here would be our described line. The described line has two qualities. One, it goes through this point, which is xy, and it's parallel to. So first we write our equation, y equals mx plus b. We only need a slope and a y-intercept. So we have to establish how are we going to find the slope here. Well, it's parallel to this. And we know slope equals slope. Our given slope is 5 over 3. So our desired slope must also be 5 over 3. So I'm going to take that and plunk it in right here. Then I plug in my x. Always put, if a whole number goes next to a fraction, always put it over 1. And then my y is going to go over here. From here, you're going to solve for the y-intercept. And then with the slope and the y-intercept, you're going to write your y equals mx plus b equation. Now in this case, the only difference here is we're going to go perpendicular. So let's write that perpendicular rule out, which is slope times slope equals negative 1. We want it to be perpendicular to this line. So we have the one slope as negative 5 over 2 times something equals negative 1. You need to figure out what that something is. And we have y equals mx plus b. Whenever you find that something, you're going to put it right there in the slope. Your x coordinate goes right there. And your y coordinate goes there. And again, you solve for your y-intercept, or b. Once you have that, you write your equation.
Okay. Now we're going to get into some material we didn't cover too deeply in class, but let me recap right here. Can you go ahead and draw an isosceles triangle? Those hatch marks mean those two sides are of equal length or what, as we would say congruent in geometry. So this side is congruent to that side. Look at those hatch marks. There's a real simple concept going on here. When you have two congruent sides, you have two congruent angles. Now how do you find those angles? Trace this hatch mark. Now follow this hatch mark down to the angle that it's kind of pointing to. There you go. Trace this hatch mark. Follow it to the angle it's pointing to. Right there. So when you have two equal sides, you have two congruent angles. So looking at problem 19, we want to solve for x here and then solve for all possible angles in the diagram. Be really careful. I'm not just looking for x here. I want all possible angles. Do that first one with you. We also remember that all triangles, no matter what their shape are, always add up to 180. Ready? Trace this hatch mark. Trace that hatch mark. Draw an arrow down to that angle. Follow this. Draw an arrow down to that angle. When you have two equal sides, you have two equal angles. So I'd like you to sweep these two angles because that means they're congruent. So this angle and this angle are the same. So that means if this here is 75, this also must be 75 because they're congruent. Now triangles add up to 180. I'd like you to trace this triangle here. This triangle must add up to 80 or 180, excuse me. So I write one angle plus one angle plus one angle must equal to 180. Now I circle plug chug my angles. Circle, plug it in, 75. Another angle, pick it up, 75. Plus another angle, we don't know, x equals 180. Now you solve for x. Don't get all happy because you just solve for x because I don't just ask for x here. I ask for all possible angles. So I want to introduce another concept to you. Whenever you have two angles that make a straight line, trace a straight line, make an angle. I'd like you to sweep like so. You should see that this is half a circle. That sweep there. So that's also 180. We're going to use this piece of information to do this. Trace and stretch that line. Now sweep. That's 180 degrees. If that's 180 and this is 30, Let's find this angle here by doing 180 minus 30. And we're going to get 150. So this angle out here is going to be 150 degrees. Now let's find another thing we can sweep. Let's trace and stretch that line. Sweep the 75. Keep going. 
that's also 180. So here we have 75 plus something equals 180. And then minus 75. And I get 105. So this angle right here is 105. And there's no other angles possible. So when you do these diagrams, find all possible angles. This one here, I just taught you that when you have two congruent sides, you follow it down, and you're going to end up with two congruent angles. The opposite is also true. If you have two congruent angles, can you draw that second triangle? Put the little congruent hatch marks there. Now draw the arrows this way. If you have two congruent angles, you also have two congruent sides. So in this diagram, these angles are equal. Put the little hatch marks in. Now follow the hatch marks and trace the sides that are equal to each other. So in this diagram with two equal angles, I have two equal sides. So that means here that the yellow quantity is going to be the same as the orange quantity. And you need to go and solve for x. Number 23, again, you're spy trying to find all possible angles here. Watch the hatch marks. Always don't let your eyeballs rest on that one and ask yourself, what should I do to find that single angle? Get out of the habit of asking the question, should. Instead, you look at the diagram and ask, what can I do? What do I know? So let's start with something simple. Do you have a straight line? Sweep 180. We're going to use that to solve for this green angle here. 111 plus something equals 180. So we're going to minus 111. And that green angle, we see 10 away from 80 is 70 plus one more. We see that that's going to be 69. Now, what else do we know? See the hatch marks? Where you have two equal sides, you have two equal angles. Very lightly, follow those hatch marks down to the opposite corners. This means that that 69 also goes here. And again, you ask yourself, what else do you know? I have another 180 here. So I could take 180 from 169 and I get 111 out here. Trace that triangle. That triangle, we have 69 degrees and 69 degrees. So now this blue angle, I want you to find that blue angle right there. And after you find that blue angle, I'm going to give you only one more hint. Sweep this right there. Now that's not 180, but see that little box there? That's 90 degrees. So once you have that, to solve for this green angle right here, you simply take that blue angle away from 90. So you're going to do the rest on your own. Your goal is to find every angle, especially X.
Look at the instructions. It says find measure angle A. So first one, I'm going to sweep angle A. That is my ultimate goal. I have a triangle, so I'm going to trace the triangle. And I know that angle plus angle plus angle equals 180 in a triangle. So here, circle plug chuck, we have one angle, circle it, x plus 64, plus another angle, circle it, x plus 49, plus another angle, 71, equals 180. You go ahead and solve for x, now when you're done, x is not your final answer because your final answer is to solve for that entire angle. So make sure you do that. This one says find the measure of each angle indicated and our goal here is to solve for this one. However, don't keep your eyeballs here and ask yourself, what should I do to figure that out? Should is not what you ask. You ask yourself what you can do. What do you notice? Well, there's no hatch marks, so there's no congruent angles. So let's start with what we do know. That we know is 180. We can use that to solve for the green angle. Once you have the green angle, you already have this yellow angle and then you can use the fact that three angles of a triangle add up to 180 to get that last one. So again, you don't look at what you should do to solve for the unknown. You always start with what you do have or what you can do. In the translation, reflection, rotation problem, it's my experience that uh, the rotations are the most difficult, the others are not. So I'm going to do one rotation here for you or with you. We have point P and P is at 1, negative 1, positive 3. And then I have Z, and Z is at positive 2, positive 4. And the last one is V, and V is at positive 3, and no going up or down, so it's 0. Now let's look at what we're doing for the rotation. We're rotating 90 counterclockwise. And if you look on your cardstock, remember to rotate 90 clockwise, we're going to switch and flip counterclockwise to the left. See that counterclockwise arrow? Switch and flip to the left. Okay, first order of business is you want to switch the positions of the X and Y. Do nothing else. Just switch. So this is negative 1, 3. We get 3, negative 1. This is 2, 4. So we do 4, 2. This is 3, 0. We do 0, 3. Now it's counterclockwise, so we draw a counterclockwise arrow to the left. Please draw the arrow, draw the arrow, flip that sign. Draw the arrow, flip that sign, draw the arrow, and there's no sign to flip on zero. Now let's plot our resulting points. Negative 3, negative 1. 
to the left 3, down 1, that's going to be P prime. Z is at negative 4, negative 2, or positive 2, so negative 4, positive 2. That's going to be Z prime. And D is at 0, 3, so 0, 3. And then we're going to close this up so you can see it. Now, it may be hard to see whether or not this is a true 90 degree rotation. So, the easiest way to test for that is this. Start a point at the origin. Now, choose any two sets of points. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose this green Z. So, I'm going to go from the origin to the original Z, and from the origin to the new Z. And I look. One, is that 90 degrees? And the answer is, yeah, that's 90. Two, the direction, counterclockwise. It says, find all possible angles in the parallelogram below. Well, a couple thoughts here. Remember, parallelograms, are rotations. They're not reflections. If I take this triangle and I rotate it right at the middle, I get, by swinging around, I get this triangle here. It's a rotation. It's not a reflection. It's a rotation. That means that this here, this angle here, swings around and it's the same as that angle. This angle here, when we rotate, becomes this angle here. And you can see this third angle up here is the same here. So one thing you learn about parallelograms is the fact that opposite angles in a parallelogram, because that rotates around, is the same. Now, another thing you want to notice is, of course, triangles add up to 180. So, we know that, in this case, the green, the green, the red, and the orange have to add up to 180 because it's a triangle. Well, if you look really carefully, this will be a trick for number 40. Here we have a green and a red and an orange. I'd like you to sweep that. That's going to tell you something about that angle and these angles together. A little question mark. There's a property there. Let's see if you can't figure that out. That's going to help you for problem number 40. Find all possible angles in the isosceles trapezoid below. Well, if it's isosceles, that means these two sides are equal. That means it has line symmetry. I'd like you to draw in the line symmetry. Now, if you were to fold along that line symmetry, you would see that these two shapes on the left and on the right are exactly the same shape. We also learned in another lesson that all quadrilaterals are technically made up of two triangles. So that means all quadrilaterals have to add up to 360. Now how does this information help us with finding the other angles here? Well, if we have two equal sides, we have two equal angles, so that this down here and this here must be the same. That forces this up here and this up here to also be the same. So 
So that means if this is 107, this is 107. And again, this is a quad, so we know it has to add up to 360 together, all four angles. So I'm going to add 107 and 107. I get 214. Subtract that from 360. And we get 146. Now these two angles together then have to add up to 146. So we're going to divide 146 by 2. 2 goes into 14 7 times. With nothing left over. So it's 70. So each of these angles here are 70. Uh, 140, excuse me. That's 146. So that's going to be 73. Use these basic concepts to help you on the right.